Are you waking up with an alarm clock or are there times where, man, that rooster is waking <laughs> us up and we, we were going to sleep in a little bit later today. I'm just kind of curious. Now that one I am actually curious about. Okay. Uh, no, I, don't so know. I will, I will totally answer this. So yeah, I wake up with an alarm clock and I birthed them. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> You're like, wait, what? Just, just like the rest of us. Um, okay. So that is, so there are a couple of different roles though with my husband and I. Um, yeah. So he would have a different answer to that he does get up earlier, um, but he does not get up at four. He does not get up with the rooster and, and is, and is hauling water pails at <laughs> 5 a.m. Like yeah. that is not his morning chores with, let's, let, I mean, let's talk numbers at like our peak peak time of year is there anything better than a trip getting ready nope. for a long journey where our podcast release the new app and searching for a faith feeling the new fixation giving this a subscribe is the same sensation started with the day ones they gave us fuel to support the season could have been anywhere in the world but you're here for a reason notification bells have some friends all to let you know check your bluetooth connect talk your voice and i know Hello, everyone. Episode 106, Utterly Punny Farm, with our guest, Lindsay Graham. Lindsay, um, so since you're, we're going to start with this first thing. So it's Lindsay with a S A Y, but do you say Lindsay or Lindsay? How do you mm -hmm. start that? So it's Lindsay. Um, it's my mom's maiden name. So it had to be spelled this way, um, even though the A-Y is not as, you know, common, like E-Y is the spelling, but you sure. can't really change your child's name spelling if it's your middle name, so, or your maiden name. So it is Lindsay A-Y. Awesome. Now, for those who know nothing about our guest today, let me tell you something. Oh, there are the big city folk, and then there are... People that live on a farm. Lindsey Graham, what's it like living in New York City? I have no idea. I have been there for <laughs> 20 seconds and I ran away. No I'm kidding. Um, it is a place that I love to visit. It is yeah. not, it is not my home place. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that tells you, listeners, uh, I and I just need you guys to know she started a farm. Lindsay, we're we're going to get to that, but I want to go with the background. That was just the mm -hmm. tease for them to know where we're going, but we're going to start. Where are you from? Where'd you so grow I'm up? a born and raised Okie. Born and raised Okie. Um, I'm that typical, you know, stayed in hometown, um, -ish, but I love it here. Um, I've traveled. I've, I've my whole life traveled, so I'm not also that Midwestern says, oh, we've never seen the other, the other places. I've been to multiple countries, and um, I love Oklahoma. So born and raised, met my friend, and he's a Texan, and all the Texans think that they need to go back to Texas, but I won, and we live in yes. Oklahoma still. <laughs> not bad. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Lindsay, something tells me when your husband tells that story, it's not going to sound the same. Uh, correct. Well, it's changed over time. So when we first met, he was your typical Texan. Like every time we'd go back home to visit family, we'd like cross over the state line and he'd be like, do you smell? Do you smell that? And I'd be like, what? And he's like, the air just got crisper. And oh. I'm like, oh my God, shut <laughs> like, That's awesome. Oh, I know. You he know was what? that way. It's gotten better because he does, he likes Oklahoma. Oklahoma and Texas is really not that different in terms of yes. the vibe of people. Um, he did not, you know, find a upstate New York or a Californian at college. Like an Oklahoman is not that different than Texas. So yeah. um, yes, the story has changed over time. All of his family is now up in Oklahoma. And so we're all here. And um, yeah, so they have since moved up here as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so at this point, now he's going to have to prove to us, for those who don't know, I'm down in Austin, Texas. So he's that's where he's to... from. That's, he's oh. from Austin. Well, well he's, he's, he's from Oh, he's yeah, from I know it very well. I know it very well. 
so now he's got to prove to us that he's still a Texan. I mean, that's what it sounds like. I think we're going to check his, his Texas card. Um, so there is not one OU or OSU anything in our entire house. Um, Texas Longhorns still reign very large here. Um, I think he's, <laughs> I would okay. think like that's not converted. So yeah. I would say yeah. that probably proves it. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey guys, we won't need to check his Texas card. Just there's actually nobody in the room with me, but I didn't thought for effect. I know. He would, <laughs> I'd you know. scream to the rest of the Texans if they could hear it. Uh, okay. So uh, I, I don't even know how that relationships work because you're Oklahoma, he's Texas. I mean, it's not even supposed to flow, but we'll, we'll get to the relationship stuff later. <laughs> no, we're not. So are you, are you the type of person who living in a small town was always the goal? Because you did say you visited New York. So were you curious? I, I don't really know what my goal was. I don't necessarily know if growing up I really had goals that were like city or town specific. So I, I can't really say that like growing up. I mean, I grew up in Tulsa. Most I would think people in Austin, Texas, wherever know like about the size of Tulsa. You know, yes. you can do some things, but not everything. And so um, I knew there were bigger cities and I knew there were smaller cities. Um, I did not grow up agriculture at all. So just because you live in a state, I mean, every state has the country and the city. It doesn't really yeah. matter where. Um, but but a lot of people feel like, oh, well, she lived in Oklahoma, so she probably was into, no, no. My dad is from upstate New York and grew up with like au pairs and ballroom dancing. Um, oh, and my mom that. is from Nebraska and yeah, there, there's corn fields, but her dad didn't do that. And so I did not grow up in that. I lived suburban. Um, I didn't even do 4-H. Uh, oh, I, I was going to ask you that. <laughs> no, I think it. I had like a Maltese dog growing up. Like that was the extent of like livestock. So to answer the question of like, was this always on the goal? No, like not even close. I liked it. I liked every time I would go more rural. I kind of it kind of had a homey feeling to it, but I didn't know anybody that lived in the country. I didn't really know anybody that. I mean, everybody kind of did, but not really. You know, it's yeah, kind of like yeah. it's like Austin. You drive twenty minutes, and someone has a horse, yes. but that doesn't necessarily mean that they have like a farm. Yeah. So this was not part of the goal, but it wasn't not part of the goal. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a that's a good life. A good life is when. You are interested in taking that that path to the left, that mm -hmm. to go off road and say, okay, the GPS is taking me this way, but I'd like to, and and so and you did it. So we're gonna get to we're gonna get to that because this is just like consuming me here. I, I was very excited for this opportunity, so thank you very much in advance. All right, high school. How many people were in your graduating class? In high yeah. Well, so if I went to a public school, it would have been like a normal amount. But I went yeah. to a private school. Um, I went to a private Christian school. I actually oh. really liked it. Um, I love being in everything. It uh -huh. wouldn't matter if it was a Christian school or a um, a tiny rural school. I like I liked playing volleyball and being in student council and yeah. being on the prom committee and being in a robotics club. Like I yeah. am very social and small does give you that. So mm -hmm. um 27, I think is the answer. Cool. Yes. No, you literally were everything. You voted for yourself for prom queen. <laughs> you had okay. to. So, so funny story on that. Like I actually am pretty academic and like school came very easy to me. And so I made it, I would make a joke to Dustin, my husband and be like, well, yeah, I was valedictorian or so. And he'd be like, you know, it doesn't take much if you, oh. Oh, yeah. and I said, I would always be like, you do know that there's still a standard that applies. Like you can't <laughs> have a bunch of C students and have a valedictorian. It still has a standard. Yes. <laughs> But. This guy sounds so funny. I hate to say this. I want him on the pod next. I know. Jeez. He would have been. You guys would probably go down a whole path and like be buds. He's the funny one. He's real funny. Well, we, we'll be the judge of that. You're uh, you're no slouch. So we're enjoying this now. All right. So I'm very curious then. Not 
of, of the entire school, I, I've never had to hesitate on this question, but I'm still going to ask it because I, I don't do this for everyone, but I, I certainly want to do it here. Senior year, let's say you, whether you're brown bagging it or you're in the lunch line and the, the lunch guy in his hairnet and cigarette hanging out, it's not lit at least. Okay. <laughs> he gets, he schlop. He, th he, he throws some chili onto your tray. What table are you sitting at when you come out? Oh, I was pretty popular. Oh. oh. Yeah. But, but at the same time, like we actually had like a pretty good vibe of senior year. Like you had, like I was on more the popular side because sports is always more popular in every yes. school. Like yes. regardless of what you say, um, they're always going to be like the more, but I mean, with that size, like, yeah, there were people that didn't have as maybe as many friends, but nobody, like, it was really hard to be bullied on 27 people. Like it was very <laughs> obvious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. You didn't really like slide under. Um, I, but I got along with so many people and I, some of my friends that I met, I want to say like seventh or eighth grade, there was a group of four of us girls and I'm still friends with them today. Um, yeah, like and that. the reason I'm friends with them, and this was like the life lesson. And I tell my kids, I tell my older one, this, I said, there was two of us that were sportsy and popular. I'm, and it's not that they weren't popular, but, um, I didn't look really, I didn't look very bad in high school. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, you know, some of us looked awkward in high school and now they're like, yes. now I looked fine in high school. Um, oh. and, and I did sports and I was stuff like that. So we were a little bit more popular and then they were quiet. They were into different things. Um, we weren't great friends with them, but here, here's where the story comes in. We had always older friends, my, my girlfriend and I, um, yeah. we always had older friends. Like we were more popular with the older and we got invited to something one time and we we're like, yeah, we'd love to go. And I remember being at the locker and one of them comes by and they were like, Hey, we've decided like, that's not going to happen. Like, sorry, next time. Mm -hmm. And kind of like moved on. And we ended up becoming friends with these girls. And I remember going to their house the first time and I was like, I don't know if we're gonna, and we had the <laughs> best time. And I felt for the first time what it felt like to have friends that I wasn't trying to be something. Like there know. wasn't something I was trying to do. They never bailed on me after that. And they weren't like, if you were to watch a movie of it, they wouldn't have been the girls that I should be hanging out with. Yep. And like, I'm sure they're gonna listen to this and be like, screw you. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> no. No. You know, like, but they're actually like, two, like they're, two of the more successful gorgeous girls out of all four of us oh, man. Um, in different ways. But yeah. that's the point of like teaching that and realizing like, I wish more of our young people would understand yes. that like how a true friendship, how it actually feels. Mm -hmm. And like in high school, I had them like these true friendships and it wasn't, it was amazing. And they ended up actually going to different schools my junior and senior year. Oh. Um, and Anyways, I don't know where we diverted on that, but no, that's that's. I mean, that's it's those <laughs> connections, those connections, those relationships. That's what this is all about. I mean, that's we got into this pod uh, to to have the opportunity to to hear people's stories, and uh, that's the first time we've gone down that road. And you know what? I think uh, I think you know that sounds like a movie that needs to happen. Oh yeah, I mean the life lessons that even that taught me of like who you think you're supposed to be friends with or yep. who fits your um, genre, like yep. whether it be race or religion or social status or mm -hmm. interest, like you decide that they fit your genre. So those are who you're supposed to be friends with. And right. honestly, sometimes those are your worst friends and that it actually like, because you're e either too alike or nobody's challenging each other or yes. Um, or maybe you're competing even within that friend group. If you're so yeah. alike, I don't know. There was just something about learning that method of like, yeah, I had friends, but they were like, they were so true that they're still around. Yeah. Like it's been, you know, it'll age me, but you know, it's been <laughs> 15 years, whatever, since high yeah. school. And I still, we still have a group chat and we still talk all the time, all the time. We do like a weekly update and everybody gets a chance. We go in order in initial order and everybody has an update for that week. And yeah, that's great. 
Lindsay, I hate to do this to you. You seem like such an amazing person. But I got to know, in that group chat, who's the person that sends the cat pics? You're on a farm. I'm going to say it's you, Lindsay. Like, we're talking about, we talking about no. boots. Girl, I just bought some new boots. And they trying to show you their boots. And you come back with a picture of a pig. I, like, no, that's what honestly, I'm thinking. I don't because they just send them to me. Like, so, <laughs> Wait, you, no, explaining this of, you've asked me in the beginning, like, where did this come from? Was this always the journey? The answer being no is why it's so comical to so many people. Our family, yeah. our friends, my friends, like, they, they're always like, where did this come from? Because I'm, like, extremely knowledgeable now in all this farm stuff. And <laughs> like, where did this come from? And so they'll send me the pictures. They'll send me the funny memes of, like, the lady oh. holding all the chickens. And, and they're <laughs> like, this is what I picture Lindsay doing every day. And I'm like, my God, you guys, I'm not, like, a freak now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, hold, hold on. Hold on. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on now that I see you're a good sport with all this, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Is there a pair of pants that you've made out of a burlap bag that you've worn this week? No. Okay. No. Wait, okay. Do one more. Do... Oh, oh no, wait! Serious? No, you can't. You can't pal on. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> you got one? Well, sounds... I mean, I feel like I usually wear pretty normal stuff until I like. Don't care. Like, I'm tired. So I have these overalls on. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, Let's talk about overalls. Yes. Here's really the thing. Awesome. No, but here's the thing that's so funny about overalls. Uh -huh. If you were to grab anybody anywhere, any country, any whatever, and you would say, please draw a picture of a farmer, what are they going to put them in? They're going to put them yeah, in an overall. It's the costume. Them. That's what they wear. And so that's what we've all grown up as like, oh, the costume of the overalls. Oh my God, do you know why they wear overalls? Because they're so freaking useful. I can't even stand it. Like, there's so many pockets. There's a pocket here oh. for your pencil. There's a pocket here for your seed packet. There's a oh. pocket here for your ratchet. I don't know. I don't oh. know. <laughs> like, they're so useful. And the amount of pants that I ruin because I'll have like jeans on or leggings or something. And all I have to do is just go walk out and pick something up out of the pasture and one of the animals decides to rub up against me well now I have mud all over or so like when you put overalls on you just can keep everything nice you just put your overalls on Lindsay, off. I'm gonna challenge you here wait a minute so the coveralls the, the overalls they, they they have they have the straps that come over your shoulder mm -hmm. all you sold me on is just that one pocket on the front because I think cargo pants, a good pair of cargo pants would do the whole thing. So if I had yeah. cargo pants, I could almost not even miss that one on the front. Can you tell me why I need the shoulder straps? So one, it keeps your pants up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I wear a belt. Yeah, but you don't look, but then you wouldn't have to. And so then like, mm -hmm. like they can still be baggy because a lot of times, so you wear overalls over something. So you may... What it may be if it's colder, then you may have like long johns on, which I don't think I have long johns, but like oh. leggings, yeah. or you could have je nice jeans on and you just pull them over. So the whole point of overalls would be that they're bigger than your pants because oh. you're just throwing them on. Think like a firefighter throws on yep. his outfit, it's huge. Yep. Yep. So you throw over the straps and clip them so you didn't have to, it didn't have to actually fit you. Yeah. There's now, I don't. I see that now. Wait. So, wow. This is okay. Well, you know, we're we're there. So I'm just gonna stay there. So who's making the best nowadays? I'm thinking. Oh, Carter. Duluth. Duluth. No. Duluth trading on the female side makes the best ones, and they have all these little pockets. So like yeah. the one on the front is like deep, and you can yeah. put a phone in there, and like you just stick your phone right there. So then you're like, you know, doing stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they're like cute and they have like cinched little waists and you know, all the stuff that you care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's I mean, you just you they have a gnome it. one. They have like a garden gnome one, like a little gnome with like carrots. <laughs> a what? I don't have that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> when you come to the point, are you buying them? Your husband's buying them? Or together, you guys are like, hey, it's time for a new a new pair. We got to. I, I um, feel like they're more of like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's a, like it's a, a, a work outfit mm-hmm. and not like pleasurable. Or at this point, mm-hmm. is it pleasurable? Like you guys have too many. You got like, oh, no, no, no. like pairs. he has two Carhartt ones, like yeah. the original ones. Okay. Um, and I have like one. And the yeah. only reason I have it is because they had a sale at Christmas, Black Friday. And I finally <laughs> said, I'm going to get these. Because they're like a good hundred plus dollars, which it's fine. But yeah. I kept, be- I kept, you know, that like item that you just kept saying like, oh, I can make everything else work. And yeah. then you finally get the item. And you're like, why was this yes. such a big deal? Those are them. Um, I just constantly was like, I have clothes. Why do I need to spend another hundred dollars on a pair of overalls? And then now I'm like. How did I ever live my life without overalls? The point in bringing the overalls up was because we got on a subject of, yeah. did I make clothes out of burlap? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. And yeah. But the reason I brought it up was because I did have them on and we did need to like go on an errand. And I did get a look from Dustin that was like, is that? Is that, <laughs> is that gonna happen? Did, are you going to do that? that? Are you changing? And I was like, oh, is this not? Okay. Lindsay, I don't feel bad. You sound like you feel bad. I don't feel bad if we if we doing a little too much talk about the overalls because this is real. This is I like I learned something. This is this is really cool. But I'm gonna take it a step further. Now, mm-hmm. is it a shoe or a boot that you go with? And then like what type of boot? I'm I'm so curious. What what yeah. goes with that? So I wear. So you know, like no? Do you know what a muck boot is? Yes. Okay. So like most people, you don't have to farm life to know what a muck boot is. Yeah. Um, but like just your your throw on weather resistant yes. boot is your best farm boot. Um, pretend farmers wear cowboy boots out there. Those are the worst <laughs> things to ever wear. Unless imagine. you're riding a horse where you need your heel. That is the whole point of a cowboy boot. It was like, it it has the heel because of that. If I am stomping around a pasture or moving something, like they're not weather resistant, kind of, they're leather. They're cold. I don't know if you've ever worn a cowboy boot. They're not. Oh, oh, I do. Okay. So no, fake farmers. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, like just a good weather resistant um, boot. I need a lot more. Yeah. Um, I, I need a lot more because I'll leave them like out on the back porch and I need one on the front porch and, um, yeah, that's what I wear. Hey, I, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to start the, I'm ready to start the beef. We're going to, I think we just called people out fake, (laughs) the fake farm people. And uh, if if we have no, 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 let's, let's get that beef started. Hashtag what you wearing. (laughs) Well, I mean, truly the thing is like learning like once you're living a certain lifestyle and yep. it's actually a lifestyle function is like the whole thing like it's yes. not an aesthetic anymore and that's the difference between you know and you could you could go through all these and you could have 10 of us up here that have like livestock and one's more a western cowboy and one is more a um farmer and one is more, you know there's all these oh. different categories in farm, ranch, rural living, and it all is dependent on what you're doing. And so that's where it's like, we, we can't just sit here and say like, well, you're not doing, you're not wearing the right thing because of this. Like it all also depends on what livestock you have. If I had different livestock, I may need to be wearing different things. And so there's not like one thing, it's, it's function. And, you know, that's, that's a personal Thing, so I was gonna get to that later, but now I gotta know. So Lindsay, if, if I'm trying to start a farm and <laughs> let's say there's well, a plot of land, how, <laughs> how how do you decide? So let's say I'm a sheep farmer and there's this there's this piece of land that I don't know, the whole family aged out and died, and now it's up for sale, and it's just like a great price. I'm gonna go, but almost like I was making fun of we're gonna start beef. What if there's like Lindsey Graham and she's already a sheep farmer, like two miles down the road from it. She doesn't want me to 
buy that property right? Does there have to be some coordination? Like, because are you saying like because then there'd be like a saturation of the market? Yes. Or yes. Oh, no. no one cares. I will be. I will be the first to say that um, there is not enough small farmers to oh, no. like. There's not enough. Like I like we need so many more. And so a lot on my platform. Not that I like have a platform, but a lot on my platform is like inspiration and encouragement of like tr like honestly like driving home the fact that I like literally had no experience first generation no yeah. family yeah. money no family land no outside investors like we did everything on our own um we don't come from money like I mean I think there's a difference in saying like people are always going to be like well did you suffer like well no I didn't suffer <laughs> but yeah but I still got a, a loan to go to college. I still, when I graduated, my parents said, good job. Like they're like, yes, I was comfortable. And yes, there was probably plenty of list of advantages of that. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that I was given money to start this. Totally. <laughs> different. And yeah. so um, that's why I'm so vocal about the nothingness because i think there's a lot of people regardless of farming or anything they're like well i don't have experience or family background or knowledge in that so that's probably not something i can get into and i'm like let me talk to you about how <laughs> we bought home livestock without knowing what was happening so no to answer to go back to your question not even yeah. close there is in this world like the farming world camaraderie is nothing I've ever known before. Um, for those that actually look at it that way, we yeah. share equipment, we share, we share livestock, we share ideas. We like, there's so much because we're like, there's not a competition. Our competition is not each other. Our competition is the, um, the hog hotels in, yep. China that are yeah. raising America's pork in multi-level with blah, 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 blah. That's our competition. Yeah. We need to band together. So if we all <laughs> look at each other as competition, like no one's winning. Everyone's like, okay, cool. I raised, you know, 120 pigs this year. Cool. Mm -hmm. You did nothing. Like that was literally nothing compared to what is needed. So yeah. no, no. Bring them. So these are these are questions, but I'm gonna, as you saw earlier, I gotta sprinkle in the stereotypes. But you seem like you're so good with them. So uh, here's the first one: physical labor. Mm -hmm. In all of our minds, Lindsay, you, you and Dustin, I think was his name. Mm -hmm. You and Dustin are driving along, and there's a flat tire. You could jump out and hold the truck up while he changes the tire. Like physical oh, labor, you got farm muscles. So <laughs> talk, talk to us about the physical labor. We know about there's got to be long hours and physical labor, but but like, do you get that a lot? Do people kind of expect you? To I think they do expect that. And I have answers for it all the time. One, I always say the mental load is way more intense than physical, which almost oh. like diminishes the physical. The mental load of like, think about, I don't know if you're a dad or you have pets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so with every layer that you added another living being to your, um, you're getting mushy, but like to your heart, but, or not even that, but to your, um, what, what's that word? Like the responsibility, every living yeah. being that you added to your responsibility, whether it be a pet or a child, which a child is up here, a pet is down here. Um, livestock is a little bit lower, but every single one you added, added a little mental load. Your wife probably has more. I know she does, but yeah, it still that. added more. So now to take that and realize that our mental load emotionally and financially, we have thousands out there. So the mental load of making sure that all of that is fine all the time on top of our dwelling on top of our finances, on top of our kids, on top of our, like the mental load is hard. That That's the big one. Um, it's fine. I'm okay. 
<laughs> my whiskey collection is getting large. I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just kidding. Um, but that, so yes, mental load, but physically, yes, there's a thing called like farm, farm strength. And I think where it comes from is probably I'll just say the same thing of like you, if you're at a crossroads and there's literally no other decision to make, you can always make a decision. So it's yeah. that same thing with like physical. If, if you don't pick that gate up fast enough and hurry and close it because the animals are running out, mm -hmm. like that's going to suck. You probably picked that gate up way faster than you ever would have if you were just strolling and picking it up. Yeah. But, but then I'm going to be that person to say like, that's not farm strength. That's human. Like <laughs> you would do the same thing. Like, hurry, yeah. close that gate. Like you'd be able to close it faster. I don't think we're like in this weird like farm super <laughs> super strength that like they you know oh she has a farm now give her more like, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay um lack of amenities mm -hmm. how many times does someone say to you how far is the walk mm -hmm. to the outhouse how far away are the stores? Yeah. When's the last time you ate in a restaurant? Yes. I'm sure. So uh, that is, so, but to that point though, yeah, there are so many different ways to live rule. Like you can still live rule, which yeah. would like, what does that actually mean? Go ask a hundred people and they'd have a different, a different thing. Somebody over, you know, Randy over here is going to say, well, it's off grid where my nearest neighbor. And I'm like, okay, sure. You're on that side. The other person over here says, well, if I just can't, you know, see my neighbor's fence, that's rule. Like everybody has a different term. Yep. Um, so that being said, when we started looking for land, it needed to not be the crazy but it needed to be enough where one, we could afford it and one, we could do what we wanted to do. So we put a circumference around like the main city with our realtor and basically said any, anything within this circumference. Oh. Looking back, I like everything's fine. We actually like by chance, by God, by ground um, ended up in an amazing place, but I would have probably never done that because I think you can be so much more strategic. And what I mean by that is your proximity to certain like highways can shave off like 25 minutes of your drive time. If you like, you would know this, actually anyone would know this, but you could go down a, a road and then a road and then a road and then a road and then a road and road and end up at this person's house. Well, that road to road to road to road as a crow flies yeah. was like a mile, but the road just took you 15 minutes. Or you could still live same kind of rural proximity and live down a straight road off of a main highway, still have the same feel and it'd be two minutes. Yeah. Well, now you live 20 minutes closer. So I think there's some strategy for what you can do for what you're wanting. So to go back to your main question, yes, when we moved out of Tulsa, everybody literally thought we moved to Timbuktu. Like you would <laughs> thought we lived in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like, we don't. I mean, and I know some of these cities aren't going to make sense to you, but to go from my house to the place we always hung out before, which was like a main downtown area of like a kind of a metro city, cute, like, you know, shops and wineries and all that stuff is like 32 minutes. Whoa. So, right. And, and so when we first moved out and, but we lived like four minutes from it before we lived much more suburban, like it was kind of cute midtowny kind of feel. Yeah. Um, when we moved, our kids still went to school right there in the middle of that like little midtown area. And I remember picking up the kids at like after school and Debbie or whatever, we'll call her Debbie. I was like, mm -hmm. I cannot believe you're still driving in. This is crazy. Cause she knew that we had moved out. And I said, Debbie, you live at, it doesn't matter, but it was like, you know, here's more of the suburban and, and she lived across town into almost more of a downtown area. And I yeah. said, Debbie, you live at blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. How long does it take you at five o'clock at night to get your kid and home? I said, yeah. 
I 100% know it's going to take you 40 minutes, which is totally fine. That's not weird. I said, I will be home before you are home. And I wow. live on a whole plot of property with a bunch <laughs> of animals. And I said, and so I was making that point. We were laughing about it. But I make that point to people of like, I think a lot of people think if they desire the land feel, not land fill, the land feel. Feel. <laughs> <laughs> that like, they, they think that they're going to have to just cut it all. Like yeah. there's yeah. no nails getting done. There's no coffee. There's no anything. And I'm like, it's when was the last time you paid attention to how long it actually took you to get from one point to another in the city and realize that it actually probably takes me the same amount of time, straight highway going 90 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So is there really... And a lot of people tell me, oh, I just couldn't do that. I just couldn't live that far away. And I just don't think that they're understanding that I really don't live that far away. And now I get to have all this. So you you, you, you stole two of the things here, but that's fine because you're feeding me and you're right where we are in tune. I, I had written down here surprises. Mm -hmm. And this seems like this would be the perfect point to ask. I was going to get to it later. Are there any points where people are surprised by you? Because uh, hopefully uh, some people are going to have the audio on this, uh, but hopefully they're looking at YouTube, especially if they're going to be curious enough <laughs> and, and they want to look. You're missing all my facial expression. <laughs> yeah. No, I was going to say, I see some nails there. So I'm yeah. just going to use that for example. Uh, Lindsay, I thought you were a farmer and you look like you got your nails done. Like your, yeah, my nails your done, drive lady. My rings, I got, oh yeah. 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 So my Does nails that surprise are done. People? Oh yeah, I'm sure. And I think that that's what's so funny is like, why do you have your nails done? Don't you like do stuff out there? And I'm like, right. Yes. Because I do stuff out there, my nails look horrific half the time. So if, if they're done, then they always look good. <laughs> so, I'm also not like doing things that are breaking my nails. What do they think I'm doing? Like I know. grabbing these animals and by no, like it's not. <laughs> it's it, it. yes. The surprises um, of people are thinking that some of the chores that we do are what they've seen in like a movie, and yes. sometimes it's sometimes it's worse like crazier and sometimes it's like oh no we just you know we just pour the feed there and then they come and eat it and <laughs> i don't i'm not whipping a you know a rope and catch <laughs> yeah. what? Like, there's nothing i need to do to do that there's nothing okay. i'm doing <laughs> to that same point how many times today have you yelled yeah <laughs> no none <laughs> i don't think in my whole lifetime i have <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this was the other part. Man, you're just giving me so much, Lindsay. This is amazing. I told you. Collo I colloquialisms. Like, you mm -hmm. said one, so you got there before I got there. Do you have to? Do people expect, like, every other sentence? You haven't done it here, so you're you're ruining mm -hmm. it. Um, you did say, as the crow flies. But, heck, mm -hmm. I, I know plenty of people who yeah, yeah. say that. What is a, what is a non- what is the other way to say that? If you were to fly, if you were to drive directly to it, like. <laughs> yeah, which is boring. That's also boring. But do people, uh, you know, like manner of talk. So do people yeah. think that you're supposed to talk a different way? Has anyone even mentioned that to you? Yeah, I think that people that have met me like post my farm life. And that's what I think is so funny because I really like. I meet people now that have yeah. no idea that I haven't done this my whole life. Like they think I've been entrenched in agriculture because we aren't doing, like we haven't even gotten some to this point and how much you want to talk about it, but we aren't just like dilly dallying in the backyard and running like a couple little birds and like, Oh, there's our pig or two. Like this is not a backyard hobby for us because homesteading has gotten very popular. Like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna get a little plot of land, I'm gonna, right. like, we aren't doing that. We are a full-fledged, like, farm operation. We sell in stores. We sell hundreds and hundreds of pounds a week to wow. direct to consumer yeah. um, in, in like a very short amount of time. And so I say that to say there's a lot, there's like a whole chunk of people that are like post-farm Lindsay that are like, wait, what do you mean you guys 
moved out here two years ago. I'm like, oh yeah, two years ago, we bought our, our first sheep and brought it home and said, hi sheep, what do we feed you? And, they're like, oh, and so I do think it's kind of funny that pre Lindsay farm, look at me like a, how can I say, almost like a spectacle, like a, yeah, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know how else to say it. They almost find me like so intriguing, like, wait, what did you do today? And that's where like a lot of my social media started because people were so like, wait, what, what are you doing? And yeah. like, and it's so fun for me to be like, look at this random thing I did or like, oh, look, I wrung a chicken's neck today. Um, as a spectacle, but then there's this whole other side that looks at me as like part of their community. Um, so I don't feel like this side expects me to say, like the post farms expects me to be any different because I think they already thought I was part of it. This yes. side you know, finds something that I say like, oh, look at you, We're, like th these are be the things. Um, as someone who's lived in Oklahoma or Texas or a lot of places, at some point we've gone hunting-ish most yeah. people have somehow. I really yeah. didn't grow up in it, but like at one time I went hunting. So I have one camo jacket that is not part of my decor. I'm not <laughs> redneck. Like I don't have a hunting jacket. So I had one on because it was one of the warmer ones that I had. And so like a pre-farm person was like, look at you in your camo jacket now. And I'm like, oh I literally had this. <laughs> like, what, what did that have any... Do you know a farmer doesn't actually want to be camouflaged, right? No. Like, there's nothing <laughs> to do with it. But we'll yeah. do those things. And it's like, sometimes I feel like I can't do anything without people being like, oh, look at you now. You you now have a pair of boots. I'm like, everybody has a pair of boots in Oklahoma. I yeah. always have a pair of boots. So. <laughs> the day we, I did ask a little earlier, I, I did ask about the long hours and physical labor. We want to go back to the hours. Um, are you waking up with an alarm clock or are there times where, man, that rooster is waking <laughs> us up and we, we were going to sleep in a little bit later today. I'm just kind of curious. Now that one I am actually curious about. Okay. Uh, no, I don't so know. I will. I will totally answer this. So yeah, I wake up at an alarm clock and I birthed them. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're like, wait, what just Just like the rest of us. <laughs> um, okay, so that is, so there are a couple of different roles though with my husband and I. Um, yeah. So he would have a different answer that he does get up earlier, um, but he does not get up at four. He does not get up with the rooster and, and, is, and is hauling water pails <laughs> at 5 a.m. Like yeah. that is not his morning chores with let's let, I mean, let's talk numbers at like our peak peak time of year. We would have maybe 40 pigs out there. Um, 25 sheep. We could have two cows. Um, we could have a thousand meat birds. We could have 300 other. His morning chores are not going to be much more than 30 minutes. Wow. Yeah, like we're there. Okay, so and then so to to maybe paint a picture that you're like, I'm not understanding that. Here is is outside of farm Lindsay for anything in life, you can spend time or you can spend money, and that's for anything. So putting that same thing into practice in farming, we can just use an example. We can go spend. These are not the right numbers. So the farm people don't come at me. I could spend thirty dollars and get a feeder for my pigs that I have to fill twice a day, or I could spend three hundred dollars. Again, not the right numbers that I fill once a week. Thirty up front, three hundred up front. But my time costs a lot of money. Both yeah. Dustin and I have other things we do outside of the farm, and our time is of value. And so there are a lot of efficiencies we've put in place, certain ways that we do feeder, certain ways that we do water, like certain hoses that we have run that we run the hose, clip it, turn it on, go walk and do some other stuff, come back and it's filled the whole thing. So there's a lot of efficiencies we've put in place that if we like dinked around and this was a hobby that, yeah, that person could probably say like, oh man, my chores take me three hours. I'm like, I don't know why. <laughs> um so i mean but there's, there's days that things take longer um we don't really 
do anything else besides like hang out on the property and yeah. have people over. Actually, that's not true. We do a lot of stuff, but <laughs> no, I mean, we're not this. It's, I don't, I'm not trying to like not sugarcoat it, but like we are working 40 plus hours off of the farm hmm. during the week. So, yeah. and operating like the fourth to fifth largest in Oklahoma. So, What was the biggest change for you when you guys got out there? I'm going to say the distance from friends, family, entertainment. Uh, were those the biggest challenges for you? I kind thought of, they were going to be, but uh -huh. we're with them just as much, like if not more. And the reason I say it's not more is because like when we, cause we come into town two to three to five times a week. Like when I say come into town, we drive 30 minutes to yep. Tulsa and Broken Arrow. So it's really not that big a deal. But a lot of times we would make use of that time. So I'd be like, hey, mom, I'm coming in to do a drop off at the store. Do you want to grab lunch? Whereas on a normal Thursday, I wouldn't have probably asked my mom to go to lunch because like, mm, there's other things I need to do. Yeah. So there was almost like a part that it happened more. And I see, we see our friends just as much. They come out here a lot. Like that's really fun for them. Mm -hmm. um, so to answer your question in a funny way, when we first came out here, um, I said, oh my God, there's no drive through coffee, which I didn't <laughs> realize was like a thing I needed. Um, oh, but man. there's so many of them. I'm not even really a Starbucks person, but there's like seven brew and da da da. da. Like, there's all these different places now, like around yeah. every corner. So there's no drive through coffee out here. And the other thing I told people, I was like, there's no brunch. Oh, there's man. No brunch in small towns. And I remember someone being like, You're, there's nowhere to eat breakfast. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking like diner breakfast. That is the diner breakfast is not brunch. And that sounds really uppity and I know it. But brunch is like a cool like twist yep. on breakfast and they have mimosas and Yep. There's nothing like that in a small in a smaller town. Wow. You almost ruined it there because I some of those things that you just said, I was like, man, she ain't gonna make it. <laughs> if she was looking for but the yeah. drive through coffee. Oh. I know. And that it and it was funny where there was and like this is it's just an it's another thing of like I tell people all the time if we decide and this would not be abnormal for Dustin and I, if we decide in five years we're done. We want to go go um live on a beach instead. Yeah. Like we look at this as an opera like this is what we're doing right now. This is all we're learning. Like we don't look at life as like oh we've like we've come to our passion like we found it and this is what i'm supposed to do in life i'm like this is what i'm doing right now um but the le the lessons i've learned from this about things like that of like i in those first couple weeks was like oh my gosh what have i done and now i'm like i don't even notice anything it's kind of like a wedding it's like the day of the wedding Every single thing felt like the cr the worst thing on the planet. Nothing yeah. went right. Now, I can't even tell you what anything went wrong. Like, who cares? Like, I cannot list what went wrong on my wedding day. I mean, it rained, like, a lot. I yeah. do remember that. But the little things that were, like, catastrophic, uh -huh. I remember. So it's like, it almost feels like that, or it's like, it felt very catastrophic, but it reminds you, like, there are people that do this all the time. They move for military, they move for a job, and they just yes. find a new normal, and it's not that big a deal. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. When, when we get back to talking a little bit about the, um, the challenges, mm -hmm. it, it just seems like weather is the number one challenge I think of. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's, that is the challenge, but how big is weather to you guys? Like, do you, yeah. do you have to check that weather report every single day? You're, you're, you're checking it at night before you go to bed. That's like, that's what I think. Right. So it does, it kind of goes back to that almost stereotypical like farmer where we would like make, you know, think of the old farmer guy that, oh, if you need to know what the weather's going to be, go ask old Jerry down the road. And like, you almost make fun of it. And it's like, oh, I get it now. Because 
oh yeah, like to answer your question, yes, weather is a huge thing we deal with. And it's not crop based because we don't do crops. So we're not really looking at from that point of view, but we need to make sure that we didn't move the herd of animals out here that doesn't have a shelter when we're about to get like sleep the next day. So you are looking at those type of things more. Um, but I mean, you're not like living by it to where it's like, we are like crazy looking at it, but you're definitely more aware of it because I think it's less, <laughs> this is the humor part. It's less about being aware because you got to make all these changes and more just like preparing yourself for the morning of like, cause you're going to have to do the things anyways. Yeah. So <laughs> you're almost like, okay, well, you know, and it, it kind of, there is a judgment side that I have sometimes now of like when it, when we dipped into those like lows, um, what was that? Like in January, I don't know, like the whole country kind of dipped during yeah. like, we had like record lows and yeah. I did kind of get a little judgy where people were like, oh my God, it's so cold. And I'm like, I'm still outside breaking <laughs> water the yeah. whole day because yeah. we would fill up the water troughs and they would freeze in like 20 minutes. And so you have to go out and those are, that goes back to like, there's efficiencies and we have, I have a friend that lives in way up. I was going to say Nova Scotia, but I'm thinking it's even like way up or way up. So where they get like snow starting like October and then it, you know, melts in like April and I'm like, you, um, but they have like, they farm up there, but they have those things ready. It's the, that's that same concept when like, you know, every year when Oklahoma and Texas and whatever, we all get snow and our, we all fall apart. And then the Northern people all say like, oh my God, you guys would never survive. I'm like, no, you're missing the point. Our cities aren't used to it. We yeah. aren't used to it. It's, we would be just fine, but that's not what our flow is. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah, weather, weather's a thing, but it's not like, I mean, I'm not like going out and like charting things to uh -huh. make sure there's not something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, e even if you didn't, you you still could go down the road and ask Jerry. I mean, he'd be ready to to help you. Oh, out. he would know, Jerry. Jerry, <laughs> John, John down the road. He would know. Yeah. Okay, um, the animals. I got to know, how do you get to a point where, I let, I don't know, you said it, I, maybe you're using an example, but let's just say, how do you know that you got to end up at 40 pigs? Like, mm -hmm. how does, how do you, how do you know to grow? Where do you, how do yeah. you know to stay? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious because the, the follow-up I'm going to have is, and then how do you know that you can introduce something else? Because mm -hmm. you did say, it sounds like you, you got some hogs. It sounds like you got some chickens. And then you said like, well, you said meat birds. So mm -hmm. how do you make, how, how do those decisions flow? I'm so curious yeah, about so that. So I can kind of walk you through how it happened. For okay. some people, it's going to be like, there were a lot of jumps that you took quickly. <laughs> and I understand that it's going to sound like that. But there still was like a staircase. Okay. Um, we started by saying like, let's do a little for ourselves. This sounds fun. Um, like truly, it was like going to be fun. We could afford to do what we were doing. Like, like I, I'm not going to pretend like that's not a thing. We didn't sell everything and come in here with no jobs and look at this land and say, hurry, we have to make an income by next month. That was not our story. And so that's not going to be what some people do. And I'm not going to have knowledge. We have income that came in and we wanted to do this. Yeah. So we started with like 25 meat birds. And what I mean by meat birds, because if you are going to, you know, wonder what that, that means, we raise them up and then we, then they go to heaven and we put them in our freezer and they were only raised for meat. They grow fast. They grow plump. It's your chicken that you're used to. So we raised 25, put them in our freezer and said, yeah, yes. And so then we were like, okay, so now maybe we could do 50. And so then it was like, well, let's put 25 in the freezer and then let's try and sell the other 25 to like offset cost. So Dustin is like a numbers mania. So we have like Excel spreadsheets, we put everything in. And so we just kind of continue to increase it because your labor doesn't really change. That's wow. the thing is like for me to go out and move or water 25 birds is not any different than 100. But now I have more to sell. 
But then there's obviously different increases that like in any business, it's not just farming. You don't just raise more and raise more, more infrastructure, more feed costs, more processing yes. costs like, to scale. It still takes money. Um, so to answer that question, we started then sold some and it did really well and sold some and it did really, really well. And then we just kind of every single time would like tell ourselves we were going to do more. So we we're like, well, if we did 100, we can do 200. If we did 200, we could do 300. If we did 300 every six weeks, then we could probably do 300 double time and build an, another infrastructure. If we did yeah. that, maybe we could do 600 at a time. If we did 600, we could do three of 600. So that's the answer for that. Um, the other part is that I am really good at marketing. <laughs> um, I, oh, I was going to get to the marketing part. Oh, so send it. Because I, I was curious, how do you do, how do you get to this yeah. point? Oh, okay, I'll, yeah. I'm gonna go to your so, point and then if you don't answer it, I'll come back. Yeah, so to kind of divert on that, if you have a product or a service and yeah. you don't talk about anything about it, the journey to it, the, the prep start of it, and you come on your social media and you say, hey everybody, I have some meat bird, I have some frozen meat to give you. Would you like to buy it? They're going to say, from where? What are you talking about? But instead, I took them through this journey. Did I have a strategy in the beginning? Not so much. I liked kind of like showing the life. But I know marketing. I know business is not an absent thing for me. So I painted this journey. And so then when we had farm fresh meat raised by a family, it went like yeah. that. Because oh. I was somebody that people knew. Whether they knew me before, they knew, they liked, and they trusted me. So they bought it immediately. Um, and that's like, I, I'm i okay to be haughty about that because please take that information and run with it. Because if yes. people aren't selling selling a product or, or using your service, they don't know enough about you. You're not showing enough or your service just sucks. I don't know. We can talk about that. Um, and so, so the marketing aspect like we hit the ground running once we saw that we were like selling and we were like, I think we want to really actually do this as a business. And I don't actually really think we had that conversation. Like I don't think Dustin and I actually said, okay, do you want to like do this as a business? I don't know. Do you, do we have some numbers? It was kind of like, we were like eight months in and we had like a business account and there was like money coming into it and money going <laughs> out. And we're like, I think we have a farm business now. I mean, yeah, it was yeah. cool strategic than that but um same thing with hogs we literally started with like five justin brought them home and i looked at him and said where do you put these things where do yeah. they and he's like we're gonna figure it out and that's him he is a do it and figure it out along the way i'm a research to paralysis yeah and the two come together have yeah. really bad fights but then we're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah. I know, well, we're going to see, we're going to see which, which lifestyle listener is going to go this way, but maybe there's some city slickers that have the question. You kind of already mentioned it before wringing a neck or, <laughs> uh, what we always say head on the chopping block. Mm -hmm. How hard mm -hmm. was it on you and on Dustin? Mm -hmm. When you, when, when it, when it is time, you, you gave us the hierarchy, kids, pets, yeah. livestock, we know mm -hmm. it has to happen, but how hard was it the first few times? I mean, I'm probably a little colder than most people initially. Oh. Like I'm very black and white. I'm very like, does it have a purpose? Is there a good intention? Then like, that's fine. So yeah. I'm already probably deal with that better than most. And I'll admit to that because I have farm friends that still like their wives struggle still with some of that. Oh, okay. But there is a very big, large sentence though that I learned early on. Um, because like chickens we raise for like nine weeks. You're barely around them. They're ugly as heck. They're okay. kind of smelly. They're on pasture. So they're clean and they're wonderful and that's fine. But like out of sight, out of mind. 
hogs are like eight months. Um, cows are like three years. So like, yeah, you can, and like sheep are cute. I mean, we have little baby lambs right now that just like hop around. I literally am looking at them being like, <laughs> you are going to die at some point. Um, but <laughs> yeah. here's, here's the key. There, in anything in life, you're allowed to have two emotions at the same time. Like a lot of people say, you can't be, you know, you can't be sad about this, but also feel relief. Yeah, you can, Sherry. Like they can live in the same thing. So what what I'm saying about that is I have an emotion of like this, like it was hard to do. But knowing every single second of that animal's life, every single morsel of food, every single non-antibiotic, non-medication that ever went into that body, knowing that outweighed any type of sadness. So the sadness is still there. It's still, but this outweighs. Like knowing that because that's not a thing that 99% of people get to know about their food. Like, yes, you can get the more organic or the better one at the grocery store, but you don't know anything about that animal. I know every single second of every animal's life confidently, everything that ever happened. And that feels amazing. And that outweighs all emotion. That's my answer. (laughs) So the decisions that you guys make, is it, is it, are they affected by the things you see or stumble across? Case in point, uh, mm-hmm. I moved here from Georgia and my mother-in-law lived with us and, and we had some young kids and, and grandma, who is a city slicker, but when she was a kid, she lived in, uh, out, she visited some family that had farms and stuff. When she, we were driving down a road, not far from where we live, sort of to your point, And she saw goat milk, fresh goat milk. And now we start stopping by there to get the goat milk. Cause she was like, Oh, this is what the kids need to drink. And, and the people, they had a farm, they had goats. Uh, I, I, I had to pull up. I go to their refrigerator that was outside. I pull out, uh, a, a thing of milk. I put money in a cup that's in the door. Mm-hmm. I, and then I leave, but I'm not going right. to lie again, city dude here. Uh, it was, you know, there were some challenges cause I, there's, some some chickens and some other stuff that were just kind of walking around when I drove up or when I'm walking back there. I'm like, whoa, okay, uh, this is happening. D- does d- would that sway you? Like, if you start mm-hmm. to see, man, instead of uh, the sheep and shearing the sheep or whichever way you guys are going with it, maybe we could keep them and we could start doing milk. Mm-hmm. Like, does does that happen or? You just say, no, this is who we are. Do you understand? And I think that is where you could have two different viewpoints of livestock ownership where there's, like I already mentioned, there's this whole trend of like homesteading, of like being very self-sufficient, knowing like, and everybody's on a totally different, like the wheel or the range of that is all the way from crazies of self-sufficiency and ones that want to live this cute homestead lifestyle. Um, the Pinterest Instagram homestead ladies. Um, so there's that and they will have the mini donkeys. They will have, I'm taking cute little donkeys. They'll have (laughs) the goats. They'll have that. And, and that's totally fine. That is not what we are doing. There is not an animal on this property that doesn't have um, a dollar figure attached that is cash flowing for our farm at this point. I'm not necessarily saying that that's what we went into it to. um, But once we like caught the bug and was like, this is what we want to be doing. This is where we want, like, this is the business that we want to be in. There is not a decision that we make for fun. So if so that's why we don't have goats because we don't like goat's milk i don't like the flavor of it so we buy raw cow's milk from carol down the road um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which we open up a fridge and put money in a jar and <laughs> um, so that's how they all do it okay but so that's well that's because it has to be bought on farm and so but that then leads you to the question that probably is too farm technical where people are like, well, if you like raw cow's milk, why aren't, why don't you guys have dairy cows? 
And that's where I believe most people that get into the farming start making wrong decisions because their intention is like the self-sufficiency, but honestly, that's extremely expensive. That's actually not even how we used to do it back in the day. There, There's like this, there's so much books and, and so many things you can look at that there was really not no such thing as someone had like a family dairy cow and the meat cows and the chickens. Like you had your neighbors. A lot of times there was so much bartering that went on because that was, there were so much things to keep up with. And so my answer to people with that is no, it is cheaper for me to go buy the gallons of milk down the road than to add another livestock animal to the farm. Uh. You don't have to do it all. But that's within, that's still, again, that's with any business. That's like a restaurant having people say like, well, if you got the commercial kitchen, why don't you start catering? That might not be advantageous. You don't have to have all the streams of income for every for every business you have. And so yeah. we have a total business mind to this. It's not, that's where I kind of different with a lot of people. And I almost kind of clash with people sometimes of yeah. our decisions are very business-based. They are not homesteady self-sufficiency base it is it is cash flow based at this point it is a true business <laughs> you have given you've given us such a, a a great glimpse into the the community i i see the benefits i see uh i see the maintenance that it takes uh i see the stress i i what i think the stress could be and but I, I'm impressed with the self-sufficiency because this it just sounds so – it's so cool, which is another reason why we're doing this and I think why all of our mm -hmm. listeners are listening. So uh, we, 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 are, we are out of time, to, out of respect for your time, um, but that, that's okay I'm because – I'm, I'm getting out of bedtime, so we are <laughs> I'm so happy. Ah, glad to, <laughs> glad to help. Dustin's like, man, this stupid podcast thing, it better be <laughs> worth it. She better come out of there and say she enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, so, so we're gonna. We, I want to come back to people learning a little bit more about you. Sure. Top five artists. Uh, you could. It could be a band. It doesn't have to be just a person. But mm -hmm. what? What are the top five that you're? What's the top five artists that you're listening to now, or mm -hmm. you've always had? I want to mm -hmm. know what those are uh anything but rap <laughs> oh, uh, great keep it coming <laughs> i mean but that's literally that's i will never be the person that said i like everything uh -huh. i do really like a lot of like genres like i could pull up my apple playlist right now and put like shuffle and it would go from acdc mm -hmm. to um blake shelton to yeah. um katie perry which i don't really mm -hmm. like that much but the stuff's fun um yeah. To Motley Crue, yep. Back to it, like, but just nothing but rap, like anything but rap. I don't like rap. It's very like it almost it gives me anxiety. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like monotonous. Yes. No, no. Which that, is what Justin loves. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. <laughs> like love. I so I just I don't know that that fully answered your question. Um. No, no, it not, did, but it just brought me back to the fact that man. I wanted to talk so much more. Like I want to get the origin story of you and Dustin. I just got you like, Oh, there's, there's so much there, but th that's okay. We can leave a little meat on the bone and maybe we can get you out of <laughs> bedtime Bed. again. And we can get some of that. Cause there's I mean, always so much, there's always so much to talk about. That's not that agree. Crazy of a story. We just did things really young and we've been married for a long time for our age. So I feel like yeah. I've grown up married which is kind of bad. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I've always heard that the best relationships are those that the people met in high school and college, that those are the longest lasting ones. Uh, sorry, listeners, if not saying do, the person you met after. I'm just saying, look mm -hmm. at some of the stats. They'll, they'll, I mean, I will just to interject though in that, if you are doing it right. And what I mean by that is the phrase, like we have so many friends that are already divorced, so many. Yeah, and their main yeah. thing always is, well, we just like, we grew, like we started liking different things. And yes. like this actually just to kind of like tie it in a bow. 
when Dustin and I met, this was not a conversation. Like we never, like we talked about things, but it, it was not like, what are your goals? Like, and him saying, you know, I really want to end up owning land and getting into farming. Like he never said that and oh. neither did I. And so there's some people that are like, did this cause an issue? And I was like, no, we kind of like went with it. And there's mm -hmm. other things that I've gotten into that I never mentioned and, and in, involving, like I was, I was extremely corporately driven in yeah. like worked a lot. And then all of a sudden I had a second child and I was like, I hate corporate. I want to make <laughs> um, and, and so like, just to say that of like, when people say, well, we just kind of grew apart. Like, I'm sorry, this is going to be really judgy. And I don't really care. Like, no, you chose to, like yeah. you, you chose to, um, I would hope that someone in their twenties would evolve their interest, would evolve their hobbies, would evolve. If you are married to someone who hasn't, that sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, I, I think that I think that it can be the best, but it but you have to you have to be ready for that. So if you had a chance to have a dinner, a dinner mm -hmm. uh at the best restaurant, this insert name here. Who are three people you're inviting, dead or alive? I don't like a lot of people's history. <laughs> That's okay. They, it, it could be current. It could be that 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 your volleyball coach who was, you know, taught you how to push yourself. It could be. These are the questions that they tell you to have an answer prepared for. <laughs> and I don't have an answer before. Because here's here's the problem, because I'm overthinking it. And Dustin is probably listening and be like, of course she's overthinking this. Because I'm going, <laughs> Do I want somebody that I can like ask all the questions because I want to learn this? Do I want to ask a question of someone yeah. because I'm like, why did you make that decision? Or do yeah. I want to just have fun with somebody? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It kind of depends on my mood, honestly, that day. One, I would choose um, seafood, Cajun seafood. Not that you asked that question, but that's where I would go. Because okay. um, I love that kind of food. Any yeah. Team, anything seafood. Um, and I would probably like to invite someone in politics Depends on the day. Uh huh. Um, no one currently in office. <laughs> <laughs> don't really him. But I don't think I would. I actually confidently don't think I would have invited the other one either. <laughs> there's there's a lot of um like secret questions that I would like to know. Yeah. Um, obviously, there's you know you have to pull in somebody from like old history. Yeah. I don't know. I'm they, I don't know. I know. I don't know. Well, that's that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's why I ask these. I uh, mm -hmm. I like to butter people up, and then I spring mm -hmm. it on them. And I know they're like, that's oh, a man, question that I feel like people squirm. should just always have an answer to. But yep, yep. Some are I ready. Some are not. Don't worry. Some are ready. Some are not. It's it's it, it could take you for a loop. But that that's that's why we're doing it. We learned something <laughs> though, and and the the whole politics thing there. Yeah, yeah, to your point, I do like that. I don't know though. I think I'd want the person that was in charge of X Files. I think I'm going straight UFO conversations. Yeah. To That's find why I out. something in politics because I feel yeah. like if they were going to be honest, like I want to be like, okay, so. Yes. Because da, 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 uh -huh. I yep. think that's, that's all. I don't even know what to believe anymore. Don't even know. If, if money is no object, mm -hmm. and I say, Oh, you know what? Here is a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. Where are you? You got to take Dustin. Where are you taking a vacation? Remember, you got to take Dustin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's no solo. No solo no. vacation. No, I would love to take it. Okay. So good. on our list in 2020, was it 2020? 2021. I was going to be like, on 2021, we had already had a plan. We were going to Norway. So Dustin oh. is Norwegian. He has... Um, aunts, uncles, cousins, yeah. all still there. His parents have traveled multiple times um, because there's like air, there's um, bed and breakfasts there. Yeah, in their family, and it was on the schedule, and it obviously didn't happen. Yeah. And then we bought a farm. Now we yeah. have no money. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, time. <laughs> yeah. So we we would absolutely go to Norway. I want to go to Norway so bad, but I have traveled a lot. So I, there's not a huge, like I've been to a lot of countries yep. um, 
And so I don't have this like longing. And you know what's really funny? Last thing I'll say, um, on my 30th birthday, Dustin planned, Dustin and my best friend planned a surprise trip for my 30th. Had no idea where he was going. Like, I didn't even know at all. We got in the car and we started driving. I literally had no idea where we were going. And they took me to New Orleans. And like, when we got close, I'm like, New Orleans? What? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because i will admit and there's probably gonna be somebody that listens to be like you judgy girl i will admit i was like mm, eh, i don't go to new orleans probably the same way and this is judgy too that i'm like mm, i don't go to las vegas like it's not my vibe yeah new orleans is the greatest place one of my favorite places i've ever been to it it was so eye-opening that I had heard about New Orleans from one strip, one little street. That's yeah. what I feel like my upbringing talks yes. about more. Yeah. Of like, yeah. Kind of like, what's the bad street in um, Austin? Not bad street. Oh, Sixth Six Street. Sixth Street. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. like where they're like, oh, what a Sixth Street. <laughs> it was like that was all I knew of New Orleans. And so I was like, oh, I'm not really a partier like that. So not my place. No. The best food the best culture, the best history. There was so much to do. Favorite. I can't wait to get back. It's like one of my favorites. For our listeners, I know I had to go there for work and I was able to stay there for a week right around uh, the Thanksgiving timeframe. And then I was able to stay there longer. Uh, Mm -hmm. I stayed in in, uh, right downtown. It was Mm -hmm. amazing. One of the the stories I tell is I went into a barbershop and the guys knew I was not from around there. And a guy had just sat down in a chair. He got out of the chair and said, hey, you can go first since you're not from around here. And, and it was kind of just so we all can talk. And like the whole shop is like talking because they want to mm-hmm. hear about me and where I'm from. And, you know, they grew up around there. Like that's mm-hmm. the hospitality and yeah. the warmth. I, was loved, was I loved that city. I thought it was so cool. But I don't know where, where I was telling you that. But I, um, oh, that's why I was telling you. The longing of travel went uh-huh. away when we moved out here and well, it was crazy part of the reason that was one of the questions that i had for you and i don't ask everyone that because how do you find somebody that's going farm sit if you travel oh, right. how does that work right so there's there's different time frames that works better there's different times that we don't have as much out there so like for because we we raise everything on pasture I like open air pasture. There's not one one barn. Um, so from November to about February, there's yeah. there's no chickens out there. So there there's gonna be about six thousand out there um, starting right now. Um, and so from about March to October, it's not really great travel time. Although we're going to Disney World in September, so I don't know what's happening in there. Um, <laughs> You can find farm sitters. And again, like every objection that someone would ever have to not do something, you can find an answer for in anything. There, there are options. There's 4-H kids and FFA kids. There's farm sitters you can hire. Like there are options. Um, But when we went to New Orleans, I loved it so much, loved it so, so much. But I came back and I was like, oh my gosh, the, that feeling of, and this isn't for everyone. That's not what I'm saying. Like you have to, but like that feeling of like, I got to get away. I got to get away. Like is literally my backyard every day. It's so great. Oh. Okay. See that's, But that that's the good stuff that we're looking forward to. All right. Now this is something I generally like to ask all of the time. I believe in six degrees of separation. Who is a person in your life that you would like for me to have on this pod because they're interesting to you. They don't mm-hmm. have to be famous. Mm-hmm. They don't have mm-hmm. to have a million followers on insert social media site, but they're mm-hmm. they're literally interesting to you. And what would you do to help me get them on this pod? Um, so one of my, oh gosh, I have so many people. I know so many people. Um, one guy that I don't really like a lot of, this is why I'm going to talk him up. I don't really like a lot of um, business coaches. They're yeah. a lot, like hype men. Like I'm like, yep. go away. Like don't ever stick me in a conference where everyone has to like, <laughs> get together. We, 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 we. I'm like, you and me both. Oh. I can't stand it. I hate it. But he, his name is Kyle. He does 
like public speaking, but I have never been around someone that is so good at like challenging and like bringing everything together. He's so great about um, like work, life, faith, balance, because yeah. that's the thing that we're all off on all the time. It's like yeah. if our family's thriving, then our business is struggling. And if our faith is great, then we're probably fat. And like, <laughs> <laughs> ah, so that's why I'm overweight. <laughs> You just told me that. <laughs> no, no, that was like, but um, oh, he's just fun. I think you yeah. love him. Um, oh yeah, I can connect you guys. That'll be fun. Yeah. I'm sure I could come up with a whole other list of of other genres of people. No, you know it, that there is an unintentional thing about that. I believe in the six degrees separation, but what I do hate is sometimes some of my guests feel really bad because they, they think, oh man, now this person's going to be mad because I didn't say them. No, it's okay. It's, it's, I, I believe there are seasons to that. I believe that it's, it, it could be cyclical. Mm -hmm. I, it's just, and it's top of your head. Like mm -hmm. there may be a mechanic that, you know, it's like, this guy is just freaking awesome. And I, I'm so happy how he helped this family the other day. Uh, you know, it could be, I don't care. Oh, yeah. I have no agenda here. I, I am like a, to go where the wind blows. Mm -hmm. I'm a like master networker. I don't not everybody knows what that term means, like in business networking, where you go, um, like every towns have like towns have them. There's different ones, but like you go and you um hold presence in like a monthly meeting and you like you get to know people. Um yeah. sometimes it's with chamber of commerce, sometimes it's a different one. I'm like a master. Like I go to all of them, I, <laughs> which is like a huge part of our success too. Yeah, um, yeah. But like the list of people that, well, one of the reasons I go to them is because they're my people. Like yeah. I, meaning like if I sit at a table, this is going to sound bad. If I sit at a table and I leave the table and all I did was give, like I gave and I gave and I gave, I cannot do that every day. And I give a lot. There's a lot of ideas I have up here. There's an encouragement I have up here. And so I, I seem to be, I'm always seem to be a person that's giving, giving, giving. And I yeah. go to those things because there's also givers there too mm -hmm. that have yeah. something to give. Um, it's the whole five people around you. Um, why well, I surround myself with a hundred of them, which is why <laughs> we're going. So Lindsay, this yeah. was a set and a high point spike. This was amazing. You see, I, I did that intentionally. That was a volleyball because yeah. I, you know, I, I guess I would normally say slam dunk, but I changed that up for you. But this was awesome. This was exactly what I thought it was going to be. I am pumped. I'm going to run out of here. Whether my wife wants to do it or not, I'm going to chest bumper. Oh, uh, yeah. This was, <laughs> this was cool. Same. Uh, my five foot self was going to try to chest bump my six foot husband. And he is going to say, What is that? No, like? this was, I like, I learned something, I gained something, and, and I, I really, I can't wait to see the feedback. Um, what I normally do is, uh, you ever heard the last of me, Lindsey Graham? I'm going to, uh, I, I'd love to hear your feedback, you know, and your network and, and kind of their thoughts, because that also even helps me. Like, maybe I, there's, there, I, I didn't even get through all my questions, but that's okay. Uh, maybe there was something I, Maybe one of these I, I actually should have done. And uh, but that's that's great. No, because thank I'm you a for this. Author, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you never know. I sometimes <laughs> there are people look, there are people I have got on, and I was like, man, this thing is gonna flow. And I realized, wow, I didn't know I was gonna get through that whole sheet. Now I'm on the second one just because mm -hmm. I had to keep it going. I thought they were gonna give me more, and mm -hmm. I just had to keep pulling. But yeah. Yeah, but but this was great. So thank you very much. And so Lindsay, uh, the social media, I, I I need to give this to to those who would like to to follow you to learn a little bit more, uh, yeah. to to watch the journey. How could they? Okay, so I do a lot of social. <laughs> so you'll know every <laughs> detail of my life. And that's okay. So um, I'm on Instagram. My handle is Life with Lens. So Life underscore with underscore lens because just my life. Um, so that's Instagram. I'm a, I'm on TikTok and I have actually a lot of followers. Oh, yeah. um, I mean, not a lot. 
It's under a hundred thousand, but it's over fifty thousand. <laughs> no, that's a lot. <laughs> right now, I'm getting major hate on, so it's like going like it's uh, going pretty well. Um, yeah. I'm getting a lot of followers. Uh -huh. um, so TikTok, Life with Lens, the same. Um, that's it. Those uh -huh. are all I can accomplish. <laughs> That in itself is a job. Mm -hmm. uh, take it from me, being on all of them, it's, uh, it's mm -hmm. a chore. Uh, uh, Lindsay, thank yeah. you. Thank you to Dustin for allowing you to have this opportunity with us. And uh, you definitely helped us all learn about your lifestyle and those, those goals. And, it, and, and then, of course, the direction that you guys are going. So. Uh, thank you for sharing and have a great rest of the night. Thank you. It was so fun. <laughs> it was. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye.